Harry Hula as a as a character. He was uh, he was born uh, on the airplane between uh, Oslo and uh, and Sydney, and and at that time, I had a, an idea of what kind of guy he was, and um, it's always hard to remember uh, how the original idea was. It's like when you have a friend and you've known him for, for many years. Uh, when you look back, you really can't remember uh, how it was, uh, what your first impression was, uh, was because um, uh, it sort of develops so over time. But I think that uh, the Harry that was born on, uh, on that flight more or less was the same person that uh, was in the Batman that I wrote in Australia. Um, he has developed, I think he's, he has probably moved from being uh, an innocent guy but with, uh, with problems to, um, uh, to a guy who has certainly committed crimes. He has not only solved crimes, he has committed crimes himself. And uh, so he has moved uh, towards the dark side. And um, over the years he has become more and more like the criminals that uh, he's hunting. Um, so the story also is uh, is becoming darker and darker. I've been asked a lot of times uh, how much Harry Hula uh, is in me, um, and uh, the first years and uh, uh, when I did interviews for the first uh, couple of novels, I always said and honestly meant that uh, there's nothing uh, of Harry in me that he's totally a character of fiction. Now, over the years, I realized that that is not uh, absolutely true. Uh, there's probably more in uh, more of Harry in me, uh, and more of me in Harry than I um, than I realized. Uh, but it's um, it's something that you you, you see <laughs> later on uh, when you look back, and you can see why you wrote about his personal <laughs> dilemmas, that it has to do with your own life. And uh, it's also also hard to uh, not to put uh, yourself into a character that you write so much about, and uh, just choosing Harry's point of view makes it impossible not to use yourself in uh, in that character. I have an idea for uh, for Harry's life, for what is going to happen to him. But I, I don't know exactly how many cases uh, that includes. Um, what I can say is uh, that there's at least two more cases. But uh, I've always said that uh, Harry's near future looks uh, bleak. Uh, after that, it's getting uh, uh, even worse. And after that, everything is going to hell. So he's, he's on his way to hell, but uh, there may, may be some good days in between there. I've never really got fed up with uh, with uh, Harry, although I've been writing for uh, about him for many years now. I've written about other characters, other kind of uh, stories, short novels, um, but um, I've always come back to to, to Harry. And he's, I don't know, he's he's sort of my you know my buddy. He's my best friend. Over the years, I've I've got to know him quite well, and. Uh, I like the, 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 the mix of uh, bad guy, good guy that's in Harry. Um, and that he's, he's not the perfect guy, but he's, his intentions are good. And he's, he's always trying to do good. Uh, on the other side, he's got some mean streaks. And um, that's just the way people are. And so it's to, to, to me, he's becoming more and more alive. And, uh, and thus getting more and more, more interesting as a, uh, uh, as a character that you can use in literature. I know how everything will end for Harry. I will not re reveal it for you here and now, but it will be in uh, one of my books in uh, uh, not too far future. I've been asked a couple of times if I have any special actor in mind, uh, when and if. Harry uh, Hula will uh, become a, a movie. Um, I did think of uh, Nick Nolte for uh, for a while. Um, uh, he's a great actor, and he's I think he's got some of the same you know drama in his uh, person. Is uh, the contradiction uh, the 
the villain and the hero in the, in the same person. So, um, uh, but uh, but it's hard for me, you know. Uh, I don't think in terms of uh, of films. I've said no to uh, to uh, Harry Hooler becoming. Uh, um, uh, a film because I'm still in the process of writing the series, so I don't want anything to disturb uh, my work. Uh, but when when I'm finished with the series, it uh, certainly will be interesting to uh, to see. Um, and if they still want to make a movie uh, out of it, then uh, it will be interesting to see what uh, what actors uh, could uh, could suit that role. Einstein, uh, Eichlam, uh, which is actually a friend of mine, um, so I've been allowed to, to, to use his name. Um, he is the cab driver and Harry's closest friend, uh, and his, um, maybe not his soulmate, because uh, uh, he, he, in uh, my next novel, uh, The Leopard, uh, Harry asks Einstein why did they become friends, because they are so different. And Istan said that, uh, well, we have one thing in common. Uh, we couldn't find any other friends. So that's, that's why. And, uh, but, you know, um, he's, uh, he's a very funny guy. And he's an, uh, a simple guy, but then again, a very intelligent guy. And uh, he's, great, uh, uh, he's a great talker, you know. And Harry loves to talk with him. And he's also, uh, since Harry doesn't uh, like to tell too much about himself, he is nice to have there because he can tell us things about Harry that Harry himself can't see, and uh, you know things from his uh, youth and when he grew up. So he's he's um, he's very useful for that purpose. I think that uh, most writers they write as a reaction to reading, and it's the same thing with me, of course. Um, I think, I think in my case it's sort of a social re reflex that uh, when you write um, stories it's because you've read great stories and you, it's, a, it's sort of always a tribute to the things that you've read. And um, I, I've read a lot, uh, I started reading as a, as a, as a very young man. Uh, my mother was a librarian and my father was also a keen book reader. Um, but I didn't read especially much crime literature. But there was one guy that I was introduced to um, uh, not too many years ago, and that was Jim Thompson. An uh, American writer wrote uh, hard-boiled crime in the uh, 50s, um, and he also wrote for the film industry. Um, he was considered, you know, uh, uh, or he tried to be a very commercial mainstream writer. But he was so good at writing. I mean, he was a true artist. So he, I don't think he was able, you know, to, to write mainstream enough because he had uh, his ideas were too original. His um, his urge to, to 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 sort of drill into the human uh, mind and human nature uh, was uh, was uh, was too strong. Uh, so he's just, you know, it was called the dime store Dostoevsky. I think that's exactly what it is. So if I have like one favorite crime writer, it must be Jim Thompson. I think that what, what drives you as a writer, or at least drives me, um, is not how the book will do. You, uh, I don't portray the reader when I, when I write. I'm just trying to create a story that I myself um, can read in uh, uh, 10 or 20 years and still think it's a very, very good story. Um, so um, I don't, I never thought of in terms of success uh, nationally or internationally. On the other hand, when your job is to sit in a little, little room with your laptop and write stories, it's, it's very bizarre, you know, to, to, to travel around the world. Um, Last year I was in uh, Manila in the Philippines and I saw my book behind the counter. And it just strikes you that uh, it can't be you. It's impossible that I sit in my little room in Oslo and write about things in Oslo, people in Oslo, things that I know, this restaurant here. And there's an audience in Philippines that are reading about these restaurants where I used to, to, to have my dinner and my beers.